Thank you very much for inviting me to the conference. <coughs> I've been asked to speak to you about when surgery is a better option, which patients benefit from bypass surgery or surgical intervention. My colleagues have covered very nicely the available options, but I think we need to choose our patients sometime. So before revascularization was invented, the surgeons spent most of their time doing amputations. Sympathectomy was an invention. And luckily, revascularization came along at, at some point, and we now have an abundance of technology. And <coughs> we largely give patients advice based on our experience and our preferences, our bias, and, and also on the patient's preference, particularly I think here in Egypt, yeah, the patients p prefer a lot of the uh, non-invasive uh, methods. Now, vein bypass, the very first one was developed in France by Kunlin in 48. It never became very popular till people have done in other countries a lot of uh, studies on it. And vein bypass remained the same. It's either reversed, non-reversed, or in situ, or you can use arm vein. Simultaneously, uh, Dotter and Grunzig in the United States and Grunzig in Switzerland have both developed angioplasty and Grunzig found out the balloon essentially to use in coronary artery disease. They were both nominated for a Nobel Prize. You probably see the bias from the start. The surgeons got no nominations. And this has actually developed in the years after to a huge armamentarium of devices. We now have, for example, drug-coated balloons. We have stents, self-expanding stents, drug-coated stents, different atherectomy devices, lithotripsy. There is a preponderance. So the debate we should have is, what is actually our treatment strategy? Should we all go at the beginning for non-invasive, or should we just select patients for some surgical treatment or endovascular treatment, whichever works best for them? And this is truly, probably, one of the most controversial decisions we ever make as vascular surgeons. So I, this is a personal view, and I have my own bias, like all of you, that I do not like the blanket cover or just do endo first if it fails. Go along and do surgery because this has uh, the risk of limb loss. You trash your runoff. Um, the patients struggle. You often do it out of hours. And if you work in a country like the UK where we're cost conscious, the cost of a drug eluting balloon is 400 pounds, let alone the cost of the stents we use and and other gadgets, they all cost you an awful lot of money using them if you think you're going to win. But it's not a blanket cover. So we have to rely on some evidence, and the evidence is that vein bypass has proved itself. Vein bypass has been robust in the literature, and there are million and one studies that shows that, that it's got 70% patency, perhaps at five years now. There is also randomized trials. Randomized trials is a level A evidence. Nevertheless, this is an example of them, the Basil, Basil II. He's now on Basil III, comparing uh, uh, balloon angioplasty and stenting opposite bypass. But we could run a Basil V and VI and seven and up to 20. Or we, we will need a lot of time to do that. So. We have to rely on something slightly different to find what's best for our patients. This, those are the recommendations of the original Basel trial, and I think they are still very good, and evidence coming from other areas shows that if you think your patient's life expectancy is more than two years, and now patients live for much longer time than that because the cardiology has also improved dramatically, probably the answer is a bypass rather than an angioplasty. Now, trials talk about equipoise, which is an interesting word in English. It means equilibrium or balance. 
we, we should always think about how do we, what is best for the patient, and I think the way forward are these difficult, different classifications. We started with, there are many, many classifications that's been in clinical practice. Task, task was a good attempt. Uh, the last task, which is task two, was published 2006. It talks about individual lesions. It didn't relate very much to the outcome. Uh, I, I think Mr. Cochlin has covered glass and Wi-Fi, and both of which uh, are usable, or, although you may find glass rather difficult and complicated. Nevertheless, I've certainly reviewed some work on it that validates uh, uh, some of the aspects of it. So the patients that benefit from surgery uh, are the patients who essentially, number one, have to be fit to undergo the operation. Number two, they have to have a very good quality um, vein, whether that's arm vein or leg vein. You have to have the skill and expertise to do it. I don't think it's a difficult procedure, but also you must put time and effort in maintaining the patency of this bypass. And if you look at the indications, and you could classify them according to Wi-Fi, the severer the disease, the more likely for you to succeed with surgery and to achieve a robust and permanent answer for the patient. So the patients who have critical limb ischemia with tissue loss and gangrene are the ones who benefit most from surgical intervention. And there is some evidence to show that these patients are actually better off if they live for a long time with surgery rather than endovascular treatment. The, the other thing you must consider, and we all do this subconsciously, is the anatomical classification. And none of us actually gets a pen and paper and do a glass for all patients. It's time consuming. Nevertheless, the majority of us would go and do a, a common femoral artery and the arterectomy. Yeah, that is surgical. Uh, if you have a long calcified segment, multi-level disease, popliteal artery occlusion, very diffuse calcified distal disease, those are all indications that of the severity of the disease, and maybe they don't do well at all with endovascular, and you need to consider surgical bypass for them. For them. So anatomical classification is actually what all of us do subconsciously. So I have some other biases, like I don't like to do an angioplasty on a single vessel runoff, or on the recent occlusion. Of course, for some of you who've seen some of the recent occlusions and tried to pass them, you trash your runoff. So there are some definite indications that patients with critical ischemia tissue loss, gangrene, and complex anatomical arrangements benefit more from bypass surgery, and it is likely at four or five years you find your treatment is still patent and you have a better limb salvage. Now, this is the simplest slide, but this is when surgery is at its best, when it complements endovascular and there isn't a single solution for a single patient. Quite often we have to have these hybrid solutions and you have an angioplasty on a proximal lesion or on, a, on your runoff vessel sometime. But this is really very, very complementary indeed. So we need to define our strategy of how to deal with these patients. So we have to assess our patient's fitness we have to do the limb severity score, i.e., the higher the score, the more gangrene and tissue loss you have, doesn't you have more benefit? Um, you need to use your anatomical classification, have good quality vein. All of them should have good medical management. And at the very end, may I encourage you to look at the, any of the guidelines. This is an example of them that I find particularly helpful. Thank you.